For those of you who have followed my videos for a while, you probably have heard me mention the Pyramidus Radius Matrix. Briefly, it is a platform of an electromagnetic bandwidth. It's a, it's a frequency platform that is being created for this Earth for individuals who are resonant with those frequencies. And those frequencies are moving into higher consciousness, greater awareness, greater resonance in the heart, the heart frequency, or what folks call the heart ascension, because we're not ascending anywhere until we ascend in the heart first. All of these things bring an individual incarnated being into the Pyramidus Radius Matrix, which is the primary engine for the ascension dynamics on Earth. It is a platform in an electromagnetic zone that has been established and created for us, those individuals, those pioneers, those uh, adventurers who wish to move beyond the uh, limitations of this world system one, and it takes us into a platform that we are able to receive guidance, help, um, balancing in our system, both energetically and physically, all of these things before we are ready to move into a world system two, which comes as that flashpoint of LP40. That's I've discussed that in many videos, but right now we're just talking about this platform. And the platform is not really in the old earth, but it's not in the new earth. In other words, it is attached to this planetary dimension that we live and dwell in now, but it is not of it. Now, even as I speak this, we're moving into that pyramid's radius matrix and we don't really know it, but we are, according to what I receive. And yet there's going to come a moment when there's enough souls incarnated that are doing this and moving forward with it. It's kind of the hundredth monkey effect, and we will find ourselves in a realm that is really mostly disassociated with the one we're living in now. I say mostly. This is territory that I'm not entirely familiar with. Thoth has given me certain information on it, obviously, but there's a lot he's not told me yet, <laughs> and I will freely admit that. But I'm, I'm attempting to give you what he wants me to share now about it. Once we truly enter the electromagnetic zone being prepared for us, the pyramidus radius, matrix, we will see planet Earth. We'll be on the planet, but it will be somewhat different. Kind of like being in the new Earth star, but it's a preliminary, okay? So we're not really there, but there will be a prepared areas for us. Now, is it going to look a lot like the virgin land that we live on now only without all these other buildings and people and situations? Or is it going to look like it did thousands of years ago, millions of years ago? Or maybe none of that. Maybe it looks more like in the new earth. These are questions I really can't answer right now, but I know that it is a beautiful place, kind of like the inner earth, but it's not the inner earth. <laughs> so, it's some, in a way, it's, it's best not to dwell too much on all those details, but at the same time, what Thoth is showing me, he's asking me to put in imagery some of this through my um, AI art techniques. I draw this energy in, and then I create a picture through the, um, the paintbrush of words but it's not just about writing the words down. I'm guided with that, but it's more, it's much more. So yes, I have some images for you here, and it's mostly images in this video with some um, commentary along the way. 
The reason being is that I was guided to do this to give you a real true sense of the energy and of the visual, the visionary content of this experience. Now it's not exact, of course, I've not created exact pictures of exact things, but I'm giving you what I believe to be, guided with those, the essence and certainly much of the structure in, in uh, facsimile of these places so that you can, if you feel so guided and resonant, begin to visualize these things in your dreams, in your meditations, in a free flow manner. What is calling you? Because whatever it is, what is calling you from your highest spiritual point of reference is bringing you into this radius. Each individually, we have our own way of thinking and seeing things and visions. So it's not attempting here to say, you gotta imagine things or you gotta see things exactly like I see them here. This is giving you a door to open and it was very carefully crafted so that you will experience what I believe is a close facsimile of some of these experiences. First, a better understanding of how these structures are created, the buildings, the pyramids, these things. They are not by hammer and nail, but they're created through holographic grids. And I was first shown this when I was visualizing in the inner earth how they created the city, the complexes of seraphim that, that I often speak about, that very special city in the inner earth. Not every place in the inner earth is created this way, but that one was for sure. <clears throat> and it has to do with literally creating a holograph of what you want to create and then placing that holograph in some kind of a, though this speaking, calling it an interference grid. Interference in the sense that it interferes with the, uh, the logica patterns. Okay, I know I'm getting off into outer space here, but the logica patterns of the actual light sequencing in the holograph, and as it interferes, it causes a static, and that static uh, can be then manipulated through, here's another word, teslaphoresis, or what Thoth calls intuitive circuitry. You can look up teslaphoresis, but Thoth's version of intuitive circuitry is something far more advanced. And as it interferes with that pattern, the, the, the intuitive circuitry takes over and begins to create the, the buildings, the scenes, pretty much exactly like they are shown in the holograph, but it goes further because it can intuit what needs to be brought into the picture to make it a whole and dynamic reality. Now this is interesting because as I'm speaking this, I'm realizing that in some ways I'm describing the process of AI art that is so new now in our territory and a, a blessing to me because I'm able to use it in this way that I have not had any way to do before. Because the AI art system does a lot of the same thing, not with intuitive circuitry and all of that, but it does with the word patterns, the word smithing, intuit the kind of scenes that will best display what you are asking for. It creates a lot more than what you're asking for. And sometimes you don't want it. And you have to go back and re-roll it until you get what you want. But it's along the same principle, which I find very interesting. So these holographically designed and created, brought into physical reality through this dissonance zone, where the energies sort of conflict with one another in a way that allows uh, the teslaphoresis to enter and start using that static field to create um, specific designs and imagery that are physical and real. So now we have these buildings. Well, what are they here for? <laughs> the whole program of light having to do with the pyramidus radius. Well, it's extensive, but let's start with the simplest parts of it. Human beings embodied in their physical bodies 
moving into this electromagnetic zone, and it's not a place on the planet, it's a frequency, and then brings it into the zone, will be able to redesign their logica. What is the logica? The logica is the true divine pattern in the human being. It's basically the divine signature, but it's created out of a logical perspective. And that means lot, the higher logic is not limiting. It is designing. It has a purpose, a function, and a directive, and also a goal. And this is not some, you know, preordained thing from an alien or something. This is coming out of the heart and the frequency of what we call God. And it's divinely imprinted into our being, every single one of us. So when we are there in our human incarnated forms, we are helping to redesign our logica because remember, according to Thoth, with this ascension process, when we move from a world system one to a world system two, those of us incarnated at the time are intended to take the light codes of the body with them. And that's not an airy-fairy thing. That means you're taking the body with you, essentially, because the body is transformed into light. Um, and the reason you're taking the body, even if you have a body you don't really care for, <laughs> you don't have to keep it. Don't worry. Once you get across, you can change it. <laughs> but it's important for very specific reasons. I'm not going to go into all of them right now, but to allow us to clean the slate on this level. So we, the base level is removed. We don't have to come back here anymore. The base level is gone. We have a new base level, and that will be in the new earth. And then all kinds of magical things happen there. So what about the souls that are not alive when this happens? A lot of us won't be, even people younger than me. This might be a while. You know, a few hundred years, I don't know, maybe just 50 years. I'm guessing, but I don't think it's going to be in the next 20 years. I really don't. I'd be surprised. I could be wrong, but I'd be surprised. So, what about us? Well, we're going to be there too. Now, I'm not exactly sure. I know we're going to be in the new earth, but we're also going to be in the pyramids radius. I'm not exactly sure how that happens. Are we going to be incarnated into a form in there? I kind of don't think so. Some may be. Some may be. I don't want to do a, a complete, uh, say, everybody's going to be this or everybody's going to be that. But I think for the greater part, because of the electromagnetic frequency of the zone, we can come in in sort of pseudo bodies. I mean, they look human and they look real enough, but they're not truly incarnated forms to be able to update us for the next incarnation, which is going to be in the new Earth star. So all, all are included, all who wish to be included, all who have a passion, who have a passion for divinity, not religion, divinity, divine being. And we're attuning to our doctrine of signature, to our logica, and bringing that frequency of our being into that form. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be full of desire and commitment. But now, what the topic about this video really is about, and I'm really excited about this, I'll admit it because it totally blindsided me. I did not realize anything about this until Thoth presented to this, this to me recently. And it has to do with these hosting beings, people, I guess you could say, um, that will be with us and helping us. And they are called, well, what Thoth is calling them, is the new Astra. That's N-U apostrophe A-S-T-R-A. They are a mixture of very human genetics and star kindred. That is, our relatives in the stars. But unlike the inner earth mixture of that, because that's what they are in the inner earth, these particular entities are able to integrate with our genetic field in an exact match, a face match, as those would say. The inner earth humans, and they are human, they're re re related to us in many ways. They have, you know, Irish, um, African, uh, Native American, um, all kinds of European and Hindu and whatever, all mixed into their, their, their gene pool and, the, of course, the uh, star genetics.
but they live and breathe on a slightly removed electromagnetic zone. Now, you'll say, well, we're going to be in a slightly removed electromagnetic zone when we're in the pyramidus radius. That's true. However, those states that these particular beings have been bred specifically to override that and to be able to connect directly into our DNA frequency so that they can help us adjust to this other electromagnetic zone. Otherwise, we just couldn't live there. And also, to be able to carry that frequency through into the new Earth star when the time is right. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more about it. Again, remember, I'm just now receiving a lot of this new information, certainly on the new, est new Astra. Back to the building structures. These are all designed to help a lot of different people all over the world who are coming into this frequency to be able to readjust their systems and adjust them for the future reality. There are also discourses, um, counseling, you might call it, things of this nature. I, again, don't have a full picture of how that works, but when I think about it, when I go into the space of it, it feels very calming and very reassuring. The Earth is going through a separation period of major proportions. And those that are doing the separating is not God's finger, but the souls involved. So the new Astra are here for us, not only in the future, but now we can reach out to them now. They are here to help us create a visionary experience of the Pyramidus Radius and what that means to us. And that's what the buildings are about, at least in part, to take us into these, these areas for this work. And all of these buildings are sacred designs. They are energetically alive for us to be able to transmute frequencies within them. So now let us take a deep breath Relax and just kind of allow yourself to flow with the imagery for a few moments. Let's look at the actual pyramids and by this I mean the holographic pyramids that those told me years ago would begin to form in different locations that would bring the people in and transfer them into this realm. I say different locations and I'm also saying that you know the state of the pyramidus radius does not depend on particle location and that is true but there are nodes on the planet where these pyramids will form as part of the radius that will allow the energies to build and to draw individuals into these, these locations. This has to do again with the Golden Taya, uh, which are the location lands of the Ascension Grid, all of these things. It's all a very a seemingly complex, but actually quite simple dance of energies, locations, frequencies, but frequency is the key word. Everything else has to fall into place with that. One of the first things that is going to happen to key us into the fact that this matrix is building 
is suddenly seeing a pyramid, you know, sort of an ethereal, like cloud-like, you can see through it, very often floating on water, and then it's not there anymore. And in fact, several years ago, someone photographed something like that, long after I had already received this information. It was on YouTube, I wish I'd saved it, and it was really quite amazing. However, as we go deeper into the matrix, we will see these pyramids, these holographs very clearly, and we will be able to interact with them, be inside them with guidance and help to be able to program ourselves for the new light functions of the new earth. The buildings are the first step. And then once we have gotten ourselves ready for the experience, we're going to go back into the holographic pyramids. I say back because they are our transport there in the first place, but that's a whole different function. But when we go back into them, we're ready to receive that, that high definition frequency and restructuring of our crystalline DNA. Now I would like to introduce you to some of the new Astra. Both wished me to bring these entities through in imagery as best I can, and I feel their presence in the images that I created here. They have names. Some of the names seem very ordinary. Others seem rather extraordinary, you know, more like you'd expect star beings to be named. Remember, these are human. Now, they were created they were not born of a mother and father, but they have very high soul beings within them. And they weren't created in some laboratory with pipes and bubbles and things and all of this. Uh, they were created with love and with a high uh, platform of design. Sacred geometry, teslaphoresis, plasma, light plasma, really a divine envelope of, of birthing. And so, yes, it's not the standard way we're used to it, and obviously that's very sacred, the birthing of a mother and you know the love of a mother and a father, all of this. But there are other ways to bring forth living, highly and soul beings that is with integrity, love, and consciousness. And that's how these beings were created. As with inner earth beings and other star kindred that I have seen, they appear ageless, you know, they don't have an age to them, and they last a very long time in that, in that beautiful state. However, there's one individual that was shown to me that appears to be a little older. I'm not exactly sure why, but I certainly couldn't deny him. He was present, so I've included him as well.
He's next to Astra are obviously quite pale. They almost look like albinos. They are of a genetic strain that has some kind of special connection to serving this planet. I'm not exactly sure what that is, honestly, at this point. But that same um, type, or let's say a degree of that type, is in what they call the tall whites on the planet. And the tall whites are not that cool. You know, they, they aren't really bad, but they have their own agendas and whatever. We're speaking just of the genetic strain. And those tells me that it is spread out quite a bit in uh, our star kindred. And it goes from those who are really, really connected spiritually to those who are really, we couldn't even call them our star kindred in the sense that technically they are genetically related to us, but they're not very aware. Obviously these are of the higher caliber. The One World Legion, the OWL, as Thoth calls them, those that many call the elite and whatever, they have a very secret private program in which they are breeding uh, their own people and they have direct genetics from the tall whites to do it. That is a whole other thing. It is not a spiritual process and it is not for spiritual purposes. But, you know, this, what I'm showing you here is an entirely different type of thing. And this is done with great care, loving, and with very high souls entering into the embodiments. In conclusion, the reason these persons are being shown to you here is that Thoth is indicating you have the ability to work with these frequencies now. You don't have to wait 20, 30, 40, 50 years, or maybe when you're not incarnated and come back in another form. You can connect and help to build the Pyramidus Radius Matrix. You don't have to connect to these particular individuals, but this is a helpful hand. However you do it, the idea is that as you connect to this field of consciousness in whatever way you choose, you are helping to create it and to bring it into fruition sooner in a whole scale modality. This is something that you personally can benefit from now. Before we go into the Pyramidus Radius to the degree where we are seeing all these things that I've just shown you, we will be creating our light arcs, our light cities, our areas where souls gather to do sacred work together. Now I know that's been in process in some ways for a long time. But this is different. Thoth assures me this is different. That was preparation for what I'm talking to you about here. The sustainable living and all of that, very necessary. But it's taking a step up. It will contain that, but it will be more involved with heart-centered consciousness and receiving directly the light codes from these Nuastra and others who are helping us to form the crystalline genetic field necessary that takes us the step further into the full-blown Pyramidus Radius. The first step at this time is to find a place of peace within yourself, number one, and then in location, where you need to be physically 
that allows you to be away from the turmoil to as much degree as we can have that at this time. And in a field that is electromagnetically prominent for the transition into the deeper zone of the pyramidus radius. And eventually, of course, into the new Earth star. We all live complicated lives, and some of us more than others, simply because that's the way the world works. And you have been drawn into situations, um, entanglements that were necessary for you. But at this time, there are ways out of such complications that are integrous, that are loving, and that are filled with direction from the God self. And it's up to each of us to find that way, to find that path, so that we can be in a center of peace, both internally and to some degree externally, for this process to happen and to come together with our kindred, those who are doing the same thing and connecting to us in that heart-centered way. I was going to conclude here, but I received what I call a thothic nudge to add something. And that is, he's speaking to me about the seed banks. And these are seeds that are actually grown in the inner earth. And they are going to be given to us not in the way distant future of the core of the pyramidus radius, but when we are creating the light arcs on the land. This is soon. And it's not like inner earth persons are just going to walk up to us with a, a sack of seeds, you know. Uh, this is being conducted by the inner light network, which is a combination star kindred, inner earth kindred, and very much real here and now human beings. And one of their many joint projects are the seed banks from the inner earth. I use the plural seed banks as they are being collected from various locations in the inner earth. This has been a project that has been ongoing for many years, this collection this nurturing of the proper seeds for us because they can't just give us seeds from any place in the inner earth. Uh, remember, that's a slightly removed dimension. There might be some problems there in, in germination and whatever if you just brought them to the surface and planted them. So this is a very delicate program, just like the, the, the um, New Astra race. You know, they're, they're very specifically developed for planting in our world here and now. So they will arrive to us, various locations, various times, in a disguised manner. We won't know, unless we tune in on another level, that they come from the sacred hollow of the planet. Even though we're going to be leaving this old earth behind, that's not any time really soon, as much as we might like it to be. We're being asked to create a new earth on the old earth first, <laughs> not all over the old earth, sadly, but in locations where we can create this, this light arcing. It, the arc is A-R-K, but it's also A-R-C. It's an arcing of light. And we won't be isolated, each one of these light stations, these light arcs, will be connected to another. Um, I, I don't know exactly how through the internet, if there's still an internet. Um, I've been told that there's going to be a new internet, one that's not connected to the old world functions. And maybe it's a plasma-based one, uh, quantum computers, you know, things of this nature. I'm not exactly sure, but something along those lines. And then, of course, we also have our higher selves that are connected as well. So these seeds are going to be given to many of us in many locations of light arcs, where the light arcs abide or are being created. 
And it's possible that in some instances, someone will say, well, these are from the inner earth. <laughs> but I think probably in most cases, not. They will just be given in other ways. So let us look forward to all of this, to the beauty of what awaits us. But remember, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of fear, in the midst of desolation, as we see all over the planet, especially now, that we hold the key to the light arc and to the pyramidus radius, each of us within our hearts, minds, and souls.